Hi everyone, how's it going? A few days ago I made a review of the Mi Band 4 and I really really liked it. Now I'm going to do a comparison between the Mi Band 4 and the Amazfit BIP which is also one of the most popular Amazfit Xiaomi wearables ever made. It's also a watch that I really really like. I reviewed it about a year ago now and it's still pretty popular. So I'm going to do a comparison between these two watches. They are different, they have different features and I guess a different target audience almost. So I'm going to show you the difference between the two, which one I think is best and which one I think you should buy. So yeah, let's get started. Now I'm going to do a run through of the specifications of both of these watches very quickly. I'm just going to go through the main ones. I'm not going to take too long. Let's start with the Amazfit BIP. It is the older of the two watches. It's about a year old now, released last year. It has a 1.28 inch reflective color display with a resolution of 176 by 176. It has a heart rate sensor, an accelerometer, a gyroscope and a compass. It also has Bluetooth and GPS. So it's one of very few smartwatches under $100 that has both heart rate monitor and GPS. So keep that in mind. You can track your sleep, you can track your heart rate, you can track fitness, uh, your steps, how your general activity levels. It has pre-programmed sports built into the watch, for example running, for example football, basketball, that kind of stuff. So if you wanted to track some sports automatically then it will do that for you. It's waterproof up to 1.5 meters so you probably shouldn't go swimming with it. I wouldn't risk it but it should be okay in the shower. I've worn this many times while taking a shower and it survived for a year. Now one of the most amazing things about this watch is the battery life because even though it only has a 190 mAh battery it can last for up to 45 days on a single charge which is definitely its main selling point, its best feature. Now onto the Mi Band 4 which as you can see is a completely different design. It has a 0.5 inch AMOLED display, full color display. It has a resolution of 120 by 240. It has a heart rate sensor and an accelerometer. It can track sleep, distance, it can track heart rate, continuous heart rate monitor, and it also has pre-programmed sports built in. So again, football, swimming, running, uh, the gym, lifting weights, you can select that and it will track that workout for as long as you do it. Now I just mentioned there that you can track swimming and that is because this is fully waterproof up to 50 meters so you can wear it while swimming or doing any kind of water based activities. However, this does not have its own GPS, so you, if you want to use some GPS data you can, but you need to keep it connected to your phone. And this watch also has a pretty good battery life of up to around about 20 days, so 15 to 20 days depending on how you use it. And again, that's pretty good. I mean, any, for me, anything over 5 days is pretty impressive. Now those are just the basic specs of the watches, but what are they like on a day-to-day -day basis? So obviously I've been using both watches, and we can take a closer look. Let's take a look at the screen, and I think you'll see straight away what the main difference is. Obviously a complete different design. The uh, Masfit BIP is more of a smartwatch design. It's supposed to be, you know, this big rectangular screen meant to display more data and show more information, whereas the Mi Band 4 is more, like, well, like I say, a fitness band rather than a smart watch. I mean it is slightly bigger than most fitness bands, slightly wider screen so it can display some information and some stats, for example there we go, like your heart rate, steps you've taken, distance you've traveled, all that kind of stuff. And to be honest the MSV bib doesn't really show much more information than that, it does show basically the same thing but just in a different format, how, there we go. Um, shows again the heart rate, the amount of steps you've taken, that kind of stuff. It, I guess it just shows it more clearly because it has a larger display. Although the main difference between the screens of these two watches is obviously the technology used. The AMOLED display in the Mi Band 4 is brighter, it's clearer, more colorful, and certainly looks better, I think. Uh, certainly easier to read, certainly easier to see. However, the Amazfit BIP screen is also color screen. It's still legible, you can still read it. However, it's not very bright. It has a backlight and yeah, it's just not very as clear. It's not as responsive as you can see. There is a slight delay there when you are swiping through, whereas I think the Mi Band is a lot more smooth as we can see right here. Now you may think that therefore the Mi Band 4 is the better watch just from the screen. However, as you can see here, the Mi Band 4 just turned itself off. That is the downside of this AMOLED display is that it does use up battery and therefore turns itself off quite often. Whereas the Amazfit BIP, the screen is on all the time. It doesn't turn itself off and it will just kind of go a bit darker, but you can still see, see information. Now with the Mi Band 4, you can activate the screen automatically by just raising your wrist up and it will turn on automatically, there you go. But there is some positives for using this lower power screen. Uh, it's Even though it doesn't look as good, it does last longer and you can see it all the time. Uh, you don't need to turn it on and it doesn't have to be activated. 
Now, the reason you're going to get either of these watches, the reason you get a smartwatch in general, is because you're going to want to track something. You're going to want to track steps, fitness, sports, heart rate. Now, these two wearable devices do have their fair share of fitness tracking features. They both have a heart rate monitor. They both have an accelerometer. They can both track steps, distance, uh, fitness, heart rate, average heart rate, all that kind of stuff. The Amazfit Bib does have slightly more hardware in terms of tracking hardware. It has as well as a heart rate monitor and an accelerometer. It has a barometer and a compass. Uh, whether these are really that useful, I'm not sure. I've certainly had no use for them when I'm just tracking workouts or runs, stuff like that. And to be honest, I think the Mi Band 4 does a better job of tracking than the Amazfit BIP. Now this is a year old, the BIP is a year old, so it has slightly less advanced technology, whereas the Mi Band 4 is brand new, so they've used the latest tracking sensors and the latest software to, I guess, upgrade and make the information more accurate. If you're interested in tracking your sleep, I could recommend either of these watches because they're both super, super comfortable to wear. They're both very thin and I guess they fit around your wrist very comfortably. With other watches, other smart watches, I have had to remove them because it's just not comfortable to sleep, sleep in them. But these two are absolutely fine and I've been tracking my sleep with both of these accurately and it is actually quite interesting to see how well you sleep and sometimes it's not as well as you think. Now, what else can these watches do? That is the question. Well, I actually find that the Mi Band 4 has slightly more features than the BIP. For example, the Mi Band 4 can control Spotify on your phone. It can control music just in general. So you can select what track you want to listen to, skip one, play, pause, change the volume. I cannot do that with my BIP. I believe there is a way to some kind kind of um, work around to get music to um, to control music on the BIP, but I've not done that. It's definitely not natively possible right from the get-go. So let's just try and keep this simple, guys. Basically, the advantages of the MSFIT BIP is that it has its own GPS, it has a longer battery life, and it has a screen that's always on, so you don't have to do anything to see the information. Whereas the advantage of the Mi Band 4 is the brighter, more colorful screen screen, the more responsive screen, the more accurate tracking features, and the fact you can do stuff like control music and control other devices from it. And also, the Mi Band 4 is just ridiculously cheap. It's only about $40, £35 in the UK. Uh, it's available now, so you just check the links below to see where you can get it. Don't get me wrong, the BIP is amazing. I used it for nearly a year and I had no complaints, but uh, technology moves on, accuracy gets better, and I just want slightly more accuracy now. So that's why I'm gonna go for the Mi Band 4 and probably ditch the BIP for a little while. Now, interestingly, there is a new version of the BIP coming out, the BIP Lite, which is available now in some countries. Basically, it's exactly the same as the BIP in terms of design and functionality. All it does is get rid of the GPS and I think one other sensor and it's kind of half the price. So yeah, if you weren't interested in GPS at all, and you wanted a cheaper version of the BIP, that BIP Lite is basically the same at half the price, so maybe go for that, and that would make that a better deal. But in most cases, I would recommend the Mi Band 4. But yeah, that's just my opinion, so let me know what you think. Do you prefer the Mi Band 4 or the MSFIT BIP? Um, it's kind of a close call, to be honest. They're both really cheap, really good value products. So whichever one you choose, I'm sure you'll be happy. Actually, the only other major difference between these two are the straps. And it is quite important because you have to wear them all the time. I really don't like the Mi Band 4 strap. It's just very, you can't really shape it very well. It's very cheap. Um, I don't like this, the clip on the button thing that you have to do. Way, way, way prefer the Bips uh, strap here because it's more of a classic watch strap that you can kind of do up like that, yeah. I much prefer this kind of design of a strap. So yeah, guys, that's basically it for this comparison. I hope you have found it useful, and if you are trying to choose between these two watches, I hope I've made it as clear as possible what the differences are. Uh, if you wanna see more technology, more fitness bands, more smartwatches, I've got some phones coming up that I'm reviewing, then subscribe, because there'll be more coming this way very soon. Check out the description for where you can buy this watch. I've tried to find like the cheapest place to buy it. Sometimes the delivery may be longer, but if you want it as cheap as possible, that's what you have to put up with. Also, a full written review of these watches you can find below if you prefer to read about it. But until then, um, that's it. I will see you next time. Uh, bye.